Uni is able to get a fix in the most challenging locations. However, when you start up the Uni, it's preferable you start your survey in an open field with the least interference of buildings and trees. This helps you to get your initial fix faster and also helps you to remain your fix while getting closer to buildings or trees. In case you would like to know more about how to get a fix fast and the details around it, you can follow this pop-up and go to our knowledge base where you will find more information on this specific topic. During this video, you will see more of those pop-ups leading you towards more details on the subject I'm just talking about. To prevent cheating and to make sure we're both seeing the same, I held the uni upside down and I'm now going to turn it back up so we will start seeing the satellite signals appear on the dashboard. Checking out the dashboard, we are seeing the first satellite signals appear. Since the Uni Complete package includes Uni RTK Premium Corrections, and since we already have pre-set up your Uni GR1 for you, the Uni will automatically send its position to the correction network, receive corrections, and will start floating. After a short period of floating, it will get a fix and we can start measuring. Before we can start measuring, we first need to set up some basics starting with the pole height and the minimum accuracy. Since this is set right for UniComplete out of the box, we can use the standard profile and we don't have to make any changes. This profile is set up to not record points with a worse accuracy than 10 cm and has a pole height set of 2 meters. You can of course set the accuracy lower or higher according to your requirements and amend the pole height in case you use another pole or for example, machinery. What we do have to do, however, is create layers in which we will measure. UniConnect is designed for AutoCAD or GIS tools and works with a layer and attribute structure, making sure you get the data in the right structure in your drawings. If you are used to working with surveying codes, this is still possible. However, we will focus in this tutorial on the layer attribute structure. The uni comes with one standard pre-configured layer called manhole, used to survey manholes. When we click edit, we can see the layer name manhole, we see that the layer color is blue and it has several attributes to determine utility, diameter, cover, type and remarks. I have also created the layer green poles for this video. We will leave this for what it is at the moment and add an extra layer, as we are going to survey more than just manhole covers. Let's say that apart from surveying manholes, we're going to survey an AC power cable with two cores. We will start with clicking the green new layer button. Naming the layer power cable and let's give it the color yellow. Now we need to add attributes, which we might encounter. First, I'm going to click the green plus button and add the current type attribute with variables AC or DC. Behind the I in the name field, I type current type. And at the select type drop down, I select options to add the variables, AC and DC. By clicking the plus button, I can add as many variables as I want. Since I always want to be forced to record this attribute, I select required and I click save. Since I also want to record the number of cores, I click the green plus button again and fill in cores in the name field. Now since this can be any number from 1 to 100, and since I don't want an option list with 100 options, I select text, click required since it's mandatory to record and I hit save. To save the layer as a whole, I scroll down and click save again. As you see in the layer overview, we now have two layers which is good for now and we can move on to create a project. Surveying with UniConnect happens in projects, which you can later see the results of in the UniCloud divided in this project. The UniComplete package comes with a standard demo project. We are however going to create our own. I'm clicking the green new project button and in the next screen I enter the project name. Since I am next to the office and it's a first day, I'm going to name it Office Survey First Day. Now the next part is really important since it determines in which coordinate reference system your data will show. Native GNSS slash RTK refers to the standard GNSS location in decimal degrees. Since I am in the Netherlands and I am going, I'm going to set my local CRS, which is Amersfoort RD 2018. 
Please select your local CRS system and corresponding geoid from this list, which constantly gets updated. In case your CRS is not yet in the list, feel free to reach out and we can get it added. The project mode we can leave at default for surveying and project settings correspond to your earlier made poll height and accuracy settings, which we can select here. Click save to save the project. To open the just made project, we find it in the list and click on the blue open button next to the project. Upon opening the project, the open street map will load and the position of the uni is shown in green in the center of the map. In the white top bar, next to the three dots indicating the project menu, we find the figure which currently indicates that we have a 0.03 meter accuracy, meaning 3 centimeters. That we have a fixed solution and how many satellites we're using to achieve that. We can zoom in or out using the white plus and minus buttons and as we can see, when we drag the map left or right, it automatically centers. We can enable or disable that with the button just below the zoom buttons.